This episode of Author Stories is brought to you by the Writing Mastery Academy. Founded by Jessica Brody, author of the best-selling plotting guide, Save the Cat Writes a Novel. The Writing Mastery Academy features online, on-demand writing courses, including the official Save the Cat Writes a Novel companion course. Novel fast drafting, crafting dynamic characters, and productivity hacks for writers to name just a few, plus monthly live webinars on various writing topics. Go to jessicabrody.com slash hank to learn more and get your first month of unlimited access to all the content for just $6. That's right, just $6. jessicabrody.com slash hank. You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wine, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mom, Ernest Klein, Jim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit HankGarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I am super excited to have Brian Christie on the show with me today. He has an amazing new book. It's called In the Company of Killers. And I'll tell you what, this is a ride uh, on the the seat. Uh, You'll be right on the seat of your chair the whole time reading this. It is such a fantastic book um, that grabs you on page one and just doesn't let go until the end. Uh, I highly recommend it to everyone. Welcome to the show, Brian. Oh, Hank, what an introduction. Thank you. I'm very <laughs> glad to be here. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't find the words that I wanted. It just, you know, this, this book made me so happy, and, and I, I want everyone to, to read it. Um, uh, but, Brian, we begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or storyteller? I would say I was seven years old. Um thereabouts, um, writing uh, adventure stories uh, for my mom, um, mostly. And uh, I wrote a story in first or second grade that that won a prize. And um, I don't know if want uh, figured in then, but but I really enjoyed doing it. The uh, you know, looking over your your bio and and all of the great stuff that you've been involved with, uh, adventure is is something that is almost synonymous with your name. Um, you know, looking back at those early desires to write adventure stories for your mom, w- what was it about adventure that uh, that grabbed you like it did? Because it, obviously, this was a love that hasn't let go to to this day. What 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 was it that sparked that interest in you? I grew up in in South Jersey, uh, in, in kind of farm country, and I just loved going into the woods and and finding um, turtle box turtles and fence swifts and lifting up logs. I had a a bone col- skull collection that uh, I mean it's, it's not normal really uh but i would bring and not everything you find in the woods is already a skull so i would bring things home and hide them until they uh you know uh, dissolved down to a a skull and my parents were not always (laughs) impressed um but i just loved the mysteries around uh around uh me and um and, and that's never faded you had a uh, an interesting upbringing uh, a, as a child. The, the family business was uh, was something that you got uh, it, involved in personally. Um, that that is something that a lot of us don't get to experience. So, uh, how do you feel like the the family business shaped uh, your love of adventure and and want to to see the world? Well, so what you're referring to is the funeral home, and and yeah, my family has owned a funeral home since 1898, um, and every male that I'm aware of on the family tree uh, was a mortician and, until me, and and my cousin, who's a woman, has the funeral home now, um, and 
you know, you learn many things growing up at a funeral home. Um, you're exposed to people in the worst moment of their lives, but you're also exposed to people who are using story and storytelling um, t- to help themselves and help the, the survivors and, and remember um, the person they lost. And you, for me, you come to understand the value of story and humor. Uh, you know, everyone is looking for a way to lighten the, a very dark time. Sure. Um, so those, those were important. And then of course you, you also learn that life is short. I mean, everyone, uh, is going to end up in uh, a box, um, yeah. of, of some form and that's it. And I, I, I was a lawyer in Washington for a while and I couldn't believe the way people treated each other or uh, at different times. And I couldn't believe the policies that were being implemented at different times by, by people who seemed, uh, I would just say to myself, I, you have such a short time on this planet. Uh, why would you do that to another person uh, or, or creature? And uh, those, those things I got from the funeral home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm from the deep South and uh, we have, uh, this storytelling tradition, um, that, uh, and, and funeral homes are one of the places that storytelling, um, really happen. And I don't know if it's a, if it's a multi-generational thing, you know, when, when someone in the family dies there, there's, you know, the whole family gathers, uh, and, and invariably you hear people telling stories about the person who has passed. And, um, and a lot of times it's tall tales, uh, and a lot of times it's, it's the best stories. Um, you know, it's the, the, the stories of the better part of, of people's nature. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe funeral homes are just a, a, a catalyst for, for that sort of thing. I don't know, but, uh, that there, there definitely is something special that happens there. I completely agree. I mean, I, it's funny in the course of writing this novel, I, you know, for, bar, for a big part of my life, I felt guilty or responsible, uh, for leaving the family business. I'm, um, um, my grandfather's name, Paul, Chris, Paul, Brian Christie. My father is Paul, Brian Christie. I'm Paul, Brian Christie. The idea was, I, I assumed that I would take over the business and, um, it wasn't until kind of midway through this story that, that I realized, you know, I, I am in a way continuing the, the business. It is all about um, finding a vehicle for delivering story. And, and that was a casket uh, for the funeral home, but, but it's a book for me. And um, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So as someone who became uh, an investigative journalist and, and now novelist, um, you, of course, took uh, took a detour through law and accounting, uh, as one does. Um, <laughs> what, what was it? What was it that, that drew you to those academic pursuits? Fear. Mm. I was afraid to follow my passion and um, and a sense of um, debt, uh, to my father that <clears throat> I should not let the family down. So, uh, if I'm not going to take over the business, um, I should, what I do do should ought to be really responsible and accounting seemed like the most responsible thing I could think of. Um, and sadly, at least for me, it's the most soul stealing, crushing, uh, occupation you can have um followed closely by law um which of course i rolled into uh next because i was starting to feel okay i i want to be a writer or i i love writing and how do i get paid as a writer and and of course law is is where um people go when they when they're really afraid to be writers or at least in my case i was afraid to, to take the risk and uh um want to you know you you kid yourself that moving a pen uh is writing no matter where you are and that's not the case so so what was it that brought you out of uh you know that the safe profession and and into the the wilds and and you know telling stories what what was it that that um 
you know, that, that gave you the out? Sadly, um, my, when I was 32, my father got, uh, diagnosed with cancer and, um, he, I knew he wasn't, didn't have much time to live. And so I, I said to him, uh, I felt like I had to tell him that I had gone to law school, um, because I was afraid to tell him I wanted to be a writer. And he, he, um, he liked to fish in his spare time. And he said to me, um, but I've, I've, I've worked hard and honorably my whole life, um, but when it comes down to it, that's what I like to do is throw a worm into a lake. And if you can pay your bills, and you throw your worm into the to, to whatever lake uh, matters to you. And um, so I I left his hospital, I left his funeral, I went back to um, to Washington D.C. and uh, resigned. And uh, then I moved back to the family funeral home and started writing. <clears throat> wow! Did you um, did you initially uh, start with the 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 type of writing that you do now, the the uh, adventure journalism, uh, if you will? Like like, how do you wade into those waters? Yeah. So I John Grisham had had uh, I mean he'd been out for a while, but but everybody, if you're a lawyer and you tell people you want to write. Uh, for a certain period of time, everyone brought up Grisham. Everyone, of course, right? of course. So I read some Grisham novels, and I thought, well, this doesn't look very difficult. <laughs> so I, um, so I thought I would start like that. And plus, they they seem to do well financially. So I thought if I start with a thriller, I'll be able to pay for the high literature that I was going to ultimately produce. Um, now, of course, writing a thriller it turns out is extremely hard. Um, writing any story uh, for that can sustain a reader over 300 pages or so is very um, difficult and takes a lot of experience. Uh, and I didn't have that uh, at that time. So um, it was a complete failure. <laughs> uh, uh, and I say I moved back to the funeral home to write, but, but first I tried to keep my house in DC and I, couldn't. Um, so I sold that and I sold my car and I moved back to my hometown and I, the, the, that building was abandoned and I moved upstairs and, um, I just kept writing. And then I heard about something called the Iowa writers workshop. And, um, I sent a letter out there and, and, um, I got accepted to, they have a summer program of, uh, four weeks or so. And, um, James Allen McPherson was the teacher that summer, and he was uh, just ex extraordinary and extraordinarily generous with his time and and uh, thoughts. And he opened a whole new world for me, and he offered to have me come back and, and do the MFA. And um, by that time, I had spent a lot of time um, in school, and, and I said, thank you, but, but no, but, but it, it, it was a huge jumping off point for me. Authors, I have a fantastic new service to tell you about. It's called PubSite. PubSite is a service to help you build your very own website, your home on the web, where you can promote your work and give your fans a place to connect with you. PubSite is a website platform that allows every author, regardless of budget, to have a great-looking professional website developed by the book marketing professionals at FSB Associates. PubSite is the new easy-to-use DIY website builder developed specifically for books and authors. Whether you're an author of one book or 20 or a small publisher, PubSite allows you to build, design, and most importantly, update your website pain-free. No need to be dependent on a designer or webmaster to make a small but costly change to your website. Save the money and do it yourself. PubSite is the best platform for authors because it's a book-centric platform. PubSite was built just for authors and small publishers. Every design, feature, and layout is book-centric. They have customized designs for you to use. It's easy to build. No coding or HTML is necessary to create a stunning, professional-looking website with all the features you want. Get a custom domain name, yourname.com. It's simple to update. You can add all of your books, add a blog and a book tour, sell from any retailer, manage your email list and social media, and even do e-commerce. Build your website with a 14-day free trial 
then pay just $19.99 per month, which includes hosting. And we offer packages starting at $499 to set up the website for you. Pub-Site.com, the place to help authors find their home on the web. So even though you didn't pursue the MFA, um, do you feel like that the, that having that opportunity offered to you, um, you know, was uh, was sort of a um, what was the 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 boost of uh, the, the 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 leg up that you needed just just knowing that you could do it, um, you know, was that uh, did that give you the confidence um, that that maybe I'm not saying an MFA is not important, but sometimes the most important thing is the the confidence that goes along with, with knowing that, that you are accepted by your peers. Does, does that make sense at all? It makes perfect sense. And you're absolutely, I think that's a great question and insight. I think um, it did matter a lot. A couple of things. I learned a couple of things from McPherson. Um, one, you're absolutely right. with the confidence that, that this guy who's, this extraordinary writer uh, believed in me. And I mean, he was introducing me to other professors there who were saying he's never introduced a writer to me. I, I want you to know how uh, special that is. And that, that I, I even said, I'm embarrassed to say that because he, it didn't feel real then and it doesn't feel real now. Um, so that, made a big difference, but also the way he approached the craft of writing um, or the role of writing. I said to him, look, I feel, what do I have? What do I have to say? You, he's African-American. He, he, he started out as a early on as a, a bellhop on a, on a train. He'd gone to Harvard. He was still spat upon um, uh, by uh He's a Pulitzer Prize winner, but in in the wrong community or circle, uh, his life, as, as we see today, his life was in jeopardy. Um, and I'm the complete opposite of that. A, you know, a white American male who, who's gone to law school, what do I have to say compared to James Baldwin or Ralph Ellison or him? And he said... Uh, to me that you can, you've, I had by that time worked for a U.S. Senator and I worked um, in the uh, executive office of the president. And he said, you can bring that experience to the page. You can you, you, basically don't ignore your experiences, bring them, bring them. So that those the idea that that what I felt was something I needed to overcome or compensate for, um, that that I could use that, and that the objective was to to write in a way that that brought greater understanding to readers, which is what his writing and Ellison's writing, you know, Invisible Man, is doing. Um, you know, uh, Upton Sinclair or George Orwell. These, these are writers who are taking big issues turning them into fiction and trying to better the world. And uh, I didn't realize you could, I didn't ever thought about writing that way. And um, that gave me not only confidence, but it gave me just a burning fire to, to write. You have gone on uh, since then to, uh, to write a number of, uh, pieces that have been very uh, impactful uh, writing for National Geographic. Um, you have had other pieces published in, in other places, but you really solidified yourself um, as an investigative journalist. Um, now with with this new project in the company of Killers, um, you have turned your uh, your your sites over to writing fiction. and and uh, does this feel like a, a culmination of that? Uh, that advice that you got earlier about, uh, you know, the, what you do have to say as a fiction writer? It does. I, I feel like uh, I finally had amassed, um, they say write what you know, and, and I, I honestly felt like I didn't know anything. Um, and, yeah. I, and I feel like I finally amassed enough knowledge um, and insight. And I'd had 
I'd had my I'd had it confirmed that my instincts about bad behavior, criminal behavior, bad behavior, um, are often correct, and uh, those instincts allowed me to, and time allowed me to pursue some stories that that did have an impact. And I thought, you know, there are stories, there are crimes and injustices mostly that are far bigger than, than I can get into a magazine article um, that I'd like to address. And, and so, you know, fiction is a wonderful place to let your imagination play. It's a wonderful place to look at the interior of characters that you've met as a journalist, but it is also a, a incredibly important place um, to, to draw connections in a single story between some forces that are that are underway in the world that, that people ought to know about. Fiction has been described by uh, a, a lot of different people, as, and I'm going to sum up a, a lot of those attitudes by saying that fiction has, has been called the lie that tells the truth. Um, a, a lot of times you can um, – you know, you may think it, it's sad or, or, or may not that a lot of people tend to get their their news or, or ideas of the world from fiction, which which can be a dangerous thing, uh, I suppose, you know, in, in some ways. But as a fiction writer who also is a journalist and, and cares deeply about these subjects, um, does fiction allow you to really go deep? I mean, you alluded to it a minute ago that, that you can – really explore a subject that that the confines of a, a of a magazine article or something just don't allow um how does does did writing fiction feel like a, a freeing form of of what you you also do in your other work yeah they say i, I um the other thing that they say more very commonly is fiction is, truth is stranger than fiction yeah and and my response to that is is just in line with what you just said is that that is often true, but uh, fiction can be more honest. And by that I mean, you know, you can describe uh, nonfiction has to be accurate. Uh, journalism ha- has to be as accurate as you can make it. Uh, but to, to put each of those data points on the page. Um, accurately um, prevents you from talking about a lot of things you see that you know to be true but can't get past the lawyers or (laughs) or your editor. Uh, And I wanted to do some of that. I mean, one of the things that really moved me um, and kind of helped set the fuse on leaving Geographic to to write this novel was uh, I was exposed to, I was in Mozambique, and uh, there was a, I I got word of uh, a a law enforcement officer who wanted to speak to me, and uh, he came to my hotel room, and he was clearly terrified. Um, I had to have the shades drawn. I had to uh, lock the door. I made the mistake of having a laptop open on my desk, and he um, interpreted that as my effort attempt to uh, film him record him and i not only you know put it under the bed or whatever um i I offered to you know go sit in the car and talk to him and he he relented at that point but um the person he was described wanted to describe to me was um somebody who is has been um celebrated in uh across africa and and around the world um he has a uh, I'm being careful. He has a uh, operation um, that 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 people think is extraordinary. And this guy was telling me the secret story behind the same person, and it involved murder and and diamond trafficking and and uh, that was one of the more prominent stories I've experienced, but it wasn't the only one uh, in the field. And, and I could, I would never and can never prove uh, what he told me, but I believed him and I looked into it and there's definitely, it's there uh, that there are supporting facts, but I can't pull that together in nonfiction, but I can use that to tell the same sorts of stories um, 
uh, in, in fiction that captures that sort of thing going on. What about the character of Tom Clay, um, who is your protagonist in this book? Um, where, where did he come from and uh, how much of him is you? So Clay, um, Clay, uh, and I share a lot of uh, characteristics, um, or <laughs> the basic stories, the same basic story. We have, uh, you know, we're both investigative journalists and things. Uh, Clay had a horrible uh, event in his childhood. Um, his, he lost his mother and my mother lives down the road, so so we're not uh, <laughs> identical. Um, he has a great deal of contempt for the government. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the same boat, but um, and his his ethics are a little um, uh, squirrelier than mine are, I think. Um, so it's, but that's the beauty of fiction, right? You what comes right. out of you, what is comes out of your subconscious that is you. Um, what is it, you know, aspirational? What are you fantasizing about, or? Or what is really your character? I mean, there are some things I wrote in there. I realized, I mean, I was sharing stuff. Thank God it's called fiction because I'm writing stuff about my personal feelings and how I, what it's like to be a male in the United States today. Uh, um, and, you know, but I'm going to call it fiction. Um, so so there are there are some of his interior is is um my, me mining myself in a way that i i've tried to be as honest painfully honest as i can uh as part of the uh effort of of doing the work that mcpherson taught me can be done if you tell a honest and and deep story you can make a difference so when the when you started thinking about this book and and thinking about the the things that you wanted to talk about but couldn't necessarily do in a journalistic setting but would you know kind of offer the canvas for you to 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 paint this picture with uh with the all of the nuance and and all of the the opinion that you would like to drop in or at least explore maybe not Maybe not expressing your opinion is not the the best way to, but ideas to explore that you could get to do in fiction. Um, how did the story start coming together? Uh, I reverse engineered. I, I really like John Le Carre. Uh, the, the the fact that he's a um, sort of quiet thriller writer, um, very very um, centered on character. Right. And and. Um, I, I really enjoy he's a very literary guy um, but and he he had the Cold War going for him uh, so what he had in his novels was everybody understood Russia's the enemy right and he could kind of go from there and I didn't realize how what a gift that was for him he didn't have to educate you on who is bad and who is good and you knew uh, right from the get-go as soon as he said East Germany you're okay I get it um, all right, right. so we're, um, I had to establish who you kind of side with um and why over time um i just lost your question <laughs> I, was, I was just asking you know what how did the story come about you know you've got the character ah, of clay and yeah, you yeah. Know, how, how did you come up with with the plot to drop him into yeah so i asked myself okay what's the cold war of today that and and what can I I just like I wanted to get psyched up about going after a wildlife trafficker? What what issues are really out there that people haven't been explored much in fiction uh, that I've had experience with and and can put on the page? And so um, certainly the rise of China uh, geopolitically um, I think is underestimated uh, uh, and. I, I saw that in Africa. We're seeing that in the South China Sea. We're seeing the cruelty of um, of the internment camps in Western China that rival um, um, what the world ignored in Nazi Germany. And how can you remain silent? And how can you not put that on the page? And so I knew that that would be. Uh, I, I wanted to find a way to 
in an authentic way, uh, bring that to the page. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say one one way that that Clay differs from you, or at least I think he does, uh, is that that Clay is a is is a CIA agent uh, also is undercover. Um, do, by adding that element to his character, um, did that did that ultimately help or hinder um, the the telling of the thriller? Did did that give him? tools that obviously you don't have or we assume obviously we don't really know if you're an undercover agent or not um but uh or you know ultimately did did that offer challenges that you had to write around that's a good question i so if he didn't have that background um he wouldn't he wouldn't have he wouldn't be as compromised a person so that that devil's bargain that he accepts for the cia where the cia says hey you're traveling around the world just give us a little bit of information you know from where you go and in exchange we're going to give you intel and it's going to turn your pretty good stories into award-winning stories and he 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 doesn't like the government anyway so he he says yeah i'll take that um were he uh, not an agent, I, I I wouldn't have been able to bring in, I think, as much uh, the government and what what is what people really need to be thinking about um, uh, more. I think is is the relationships between um, the United States and China in the case of this story overall and Africa. A number of African countries, uh, and so the having a uh, an agency connection uh, helped me do that. Well, the new book is in the company of killers. Uh, I, I feel like we barely, barely scratched the surface. Um, Brian, this has been so much fun chatting. Um, happy release day on the book. I know right. it's going to uh, sell like gangbusters, and uh, I really appreciate you taking time to come on the show today. We're going to put links uh, in the show notes of this episode where you can buy in the company of killers, either in Kindle edition or hardcover or audiobook. Um, uh, Brian, I'm going to go grab the audiobook today. Um, now that it's released, uh, I can't wait to to listen to it. Uh, I've had the an art copy for a while, but but I can't wait to hear how it's performed in audio. That's uh, h- how do you feel about your your book being translated in that way? That's amazing. Uh, you're going to love it, uh, Ryan. I got to uh, audition a bunch of uh, readers, and and I'm I, I like audiobooks too. And uh, Ryan Anderson. Is the guy I settled on, and you, you'll, you've already read the prints. When you'll, uh, uh, you'll hear him read page one, and you'll say, "Ah, that, that's Tom Clay." It's really, it's really <laughs> I good. love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, Brian, I know that you also have a website that's just full of great stuff uh, for people to dig into. Where can they find you online? Sure, um, BrianChristie.com, um, and. Uh, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook and those sorts of things. And um, Instagram is Brian Christie on assignment. Excellent. We'll put links to those as well. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for taking time to come on the show. I think this has been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Authors, if you're looking for a partner to help ensure that your book is the best it can possibly be, look no farther than Pico's house. Crystal and her staff make a conscious effort to be critical yet courteous. They also strive to make the business side of things run smoothly so that you can rest easy knowing that your manuscript is in capable hands. Whether you need beta reading, developmental editing, a manuscript critique, line editing, copy editing, or proofreading, Pico's House is the one-stop shop for you. Check them out today at picoshouse.com. Are you looking for software that helps you bring your novel to life? Novelize is a web-based writing app which allows you to access your work on any device with a browser and an internet connection. Write from your desktop, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Just get the novel written. Say goodbye to sticky notes. With our notebook on the side, you can keep track of all the important information you need to write your novel. We keep distractions to a minimum, help you track your progress, and encourage you to write more novels. You can even use the same notebook for your novels in a series. 
outline, write, or organize your novel by switching between modes. You can write your outline notes while you're writing, and you can move scenes and chapters around anytime in the organize mode. Choose between the dark and light theme to help prevent eye strain so that you can stay immersed in your book. Novelize, the app for writers by writers.